Hello everybody, my name is Tatiana Harness and I am the host of the Daughter and Pops podcast. Today I have my I have my pops here with me. Hi everyone, my name is Mike. I'm officially Pops. So excited to bring you so much of the pertinent information as it relates to the WNBA. I know we're excited to try to be your one-stop WNBA shop and we want to be able to provide all the necessary content that you could ever need and we want to do it through our podcast which will be posted daily. And obviously we're starting with our season preview. And what a better host that we could possibly have than Tati. Tati, where you want to share with the, our, our, our viewership and listenership, where, where is this content going to be posted? Yeah, so our content, our content slash podcast will be posted on Pandora and I'll have the link up for you guys as well. Where will exactly will that link be, Tati? It'll be in our Instagram. I'll have a post up, and you'll be able to reach it in the caption. Um, and then um, for those that don't know your Instagram, can you go ahead and get, spell out your handle for everybody? Yeah, my Instagram is at Tati Harness, T-A-T-I-H-A-R-N-E-S-S. And then my sister Olivia will also be a part of a couple of our podcasts, and her Instagram is at Liv underscore Harness, L I V underscore h-a-r-n-e-s-s awesome great information again we're so excited to bring this content to you there's and specifically with tati as our host there's a lot this young lady does and she's certainly committed to uh, pretty much everything she does but certainly a lot of you don't know about her uh is that she loves the wnba she also loves all types of stats she loves to sit behind all kinds of high school college games uh, pretty much any type of games. She likes to be right behind the scorer's table. She loves to uh, understand how all the, the behind-the-scenes stuff that happens. And, and, and part of our goal here is try to bring some of that full circle. And she's really excited to provide this type of information to you. And we take it very seriously, but we also want to have a lot of fun. We understand that most of our viewers are going to be on the younger side. And we love you all. Exactly. So during these podcasts, you'll see another side of me that you haven't seen before. My numbers and knowledge of the game. Just having fun with it as well. So we're going to get right to it and we're going to start off with the Atlanta Dream. Awesome. So again, uh, today's episode is going to be based on our season previews. So uh, I'll be going first as it relates to the Dream. What a tough team to start with, huh? Holy mackerel. So from uh, from a, a number standpoint, the Dream are expected to win about six and a half games this year. Um, uh, please understand, this is a shortened season. It's only 22 games. So six and a half games. So they're projecting six or seven wins, 15 or 16 losses. I actually happen to really think the under is the player. So in other words, going under, I just don't see how this team wins too many games. They've lost a ton of players, right? So uh, Renee Montgomery, Tiffany Hayes, the, the staple known as Angel Magacha, she's out. We added Courtney Williams. Um, we still have Elizabeth Williams. We brought in Glory Johnson. They have the rookie, uh, Chenity Carter. She's a great player, but I just don't know. She's so young. So overall, honestly, I, I am passing on this team. I, I don't like them at all. Um, I think they're going to struggle. And then I also think that you know they have the second worst odds to win the WNBA title they're at 80 to 1 I think there's a reason for that and I happen to think that their seasons is anything but a dream this year Tati obviously their two players Tiffany Hayes and Angel McCautry got uh, dropped which was their two best players not sure how they're gonna do without them it's gonna be an interesting year for them but with them bringing in Kennedy Carter and Courtney Williams there's only one ball between the two of them so how is that gonna work out Elizabeth Williams, yes, she is a good player. She can get the boards and the putbacks, but I just not I'm just not sure how she's gonna gel with this team. You know, there's not too many great players. You also have Monique Billings with them, which it which is Pops and I's sleeper pick for the Atlanta Dream. She's usually around the six six thousand area in DraftKings. So she's our sleeper pick from the dream, but nothing too exciting about them. You know, I'm interested. The dynamic here that I'm most interested in is uh, at the guard position, right? So Tati just mentioned the, the rookie Carter. Uh, obviously, we have Courtney Williams coming over from a powerhouse, uh, a winning program with Connecticut uh, with uh, 
with the sun. Um, I, I think it's going to be really, really interesting. I can see a little tug of war going on, and I always believe there's only one ball out there, so I'm not sure how they're going to handle it. Uh, Tati also mentioned our sleeper um, uh, with Miss Billings. Um, I believe this, this team is going to miss a lot of shots, so those rebounds have to come somewhere. I happen to think that Monique, uh, it seems like I feel like last year, every single time uh, that she played minutes wise, however many minutes she played, it seemed like she got that many rebounds. So I think that's a good opportunity for her. And again, we want you guys to also understand from a from a daily fantasy sports uh, angle, we happen to be high on Monique. We feel like again, Tati's already alluded to her previous salaries last year. We feel like out of the gate, at the start of this season, that um, her she's going to be able to outperform her expectations seven eight x, and we all know that's important to taking down those daily slates. So that kind of wraps up our takes on the dream uh, again to recap i'm selling on this team i think that they're going to really struggle i think the under six and a half is a smart play uh tachi's broken down uh her opinion of, uh, of the team obviously she also gave her sleeper of monique billing so we're going to turn the page on the dream and move forward to the Chicago Sky. So, Tati, I'm going to let you go first on your overall thoughts of this team this year. Yeah, so Chicago Sky have always been one of my favorite teams to watch and do DraftKings on. You still have uh, your main players from last year, such as Diamond Day Shields, Stephanie Dolson, Chantel Lavender, the married couple of Allie Quigley and Courtney Vandersloot. And then um, you also have Sydney Colson. I'm pretty sure she was there last year as well. And Gabby Williams. So they still have some of their main players, which means that they know how to play with each other. They added in Ruthie Hebbard, which is a great player from Oregon. Definitely very tall, can add some height to that team. You know, I just think that they're going to be able to gel very well with each other. Um, and then with Ali Quigley and Courtney Vandersloot, since they're married, they're gonna they have great chemistry with each other, and they're gonna know how they both play. And Courtney Vandersloot, she's a great point guard when it comes to assists. Great Pops. point, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, with a shortened season, every win is is more valuable, right? So um, it, each game carries more weight, uh, essentially, and so. Uh, Tati's alluding to the chemistry with the team and the fact that there really wasn't any turnover amongst their starting five. Um, I think that's a strong advantage for them. As I look at it, the sky, they're projected to, their over-under is 11 and a half wins this season, uh, which essentially is saying that they're going to finish with a winning season combined with uh, they're anywhere from 14 to 18 to 1 to win the overall WNBA title this year. Um, as I peruse the odds, there's only one other team on the east in the east that's projected to win more games and i can totally understand why i'm personally really excited to see how diamond to shields plays this year i'm a huge fan of hers so talented both my playing daughters um they're they're guards so of course i'm partial to great guard play that happened to be athletic um I can't quantify her as specifically a sleeper, uh, but I don't really see too much else on this. I don't want to call them a veteran team, but they're certainly a team that has stayed consistent. Um, I happen to think that Diamond to Shields is going to be do great things, um, and I really like this team. I really, just as much as I dislike the Atlanta Dream, I like the Chicago Sky. I think they're the. I I, I would not be surprised one bit, and they are my pick to come out of the East. I agree with Pops. I love this team and, you know, just adding in players like Ruthie Hebbard, even Azura Stevens, you know, I just think this team's going to play really well. Moving on to the Connecticut Sun, since I started the Chicago Sky, Pops, you want to start the Sun? The Connecticut Sun, you know, I'm, I'm just not sure, you know, this is a team that's traditionally always in the East Finals or maybe... You know, even further than that, and and a lot of people like them to to win it all, right? So like this season uh, that's coming up, they're anywhere from five to six to one to win the entire ship, and also they have they're expected to win eleven and a half games this season, exactly the same as the Chicago Sky. So while I like the Chicago Sky, I really don't have too much of an opinion on the Sun. I respect their franchise. I think they do great things. Obviously, they have the addition of Dewana Bonner, also bring over Brianne January from Phoenix, um, but at the same time. I just question where their their morale is, right? So I hope everyone's staying safe with COVID. Um, this, this pandemic is something else altogether, and it's impacted our family as well. Going back to the, the Sun specifically, you know, John Quell Jones, she's not going to be playing this year. To me, the 
question that begs to be answered is whether she plays or not and we know she isn't to me her making her not playing due to the pandemic is completely different than being traded to another team or just signing with another team to me there's just a difference so i just question where this team is mentally combined with i know a lot of people like dewana bonner talk about how great she is I don't know. There's just, I don't know if she is the right fit for this team. I just don't know mentally, uh, chemistry wise, if it's going to work out. And in fact, I kind of intended to leaning toward it not working out. Um, Tati, your take? Yeah, when it comes to the Connecticut Sun, in my opinion, they're going to finish like middle ish. Everybody's saying they're going to be so great and everything. I disagree with Sean Paul Jones being out. She's been with that team forever and she's basically their leader and she just dropped out and not and it's not playing obviously they added in dewana bonner dewana bonner and the rookie beatrice mom premier and you know it's just gonna be a big role for dewana bonner to take on she'll have to come in as one of the leaders um another player is Alyssa thomas she played really well last year I just don't think that she'll be able to take on an even bigger role just because of how much she played last year. You know, I feel like Beatrice Mom Premier coming on, she'll have to take on a big role as well to make to make this team come far. So I'm just not sure on who's going to be able to take over the Shankwell Jones role. From a sleeper standpoint, from a DFS, right, for our DFS community that might be listening in and that might will turn into certainly in due time. It, it, who's your sleeper pick from this team right out of the gate, Tati? Do you have one? Well, I don't have a huge one, but if I were to choose somebody, it would be Bria Holmes. She has been with this team for a while. She is a guard, which is something the Sun, they don't have a great guard on this team. But Bria Holmes, she gets a decent amount of minutes off the bench, and she can score the ball. Okay, fair enough. I mean... I mean, I I think Jasmine Thomas might have something to say about not being a great guard, but they certainly don't have as many guards as they did last year, right, with losing Courtney. Um, My thoughts are I'm kind of cheating, right, and that's what pops do. We cheat (laughs) all the time. We want to look as good as possible no matter what. And obviously, if you can hear Tati laughing, she already knows. Uh, A couple of forwards, uh, Teresa Placence and uh, Kalina Mosqueda-Lewis, right? I I think those are two players. One of them is going to hit this year. Now, again, I like my bigs that can grab and gobble up rebounds. Um, I think that's important. I I tend to lean a little bit towards the hyphen, Mosqueda Lewis. I, I just think that she has a higher ceiling. Um, I think that coming from where she did come from in Seattle, uh, I think that the it's not quite of a crowded situation this year for us i could see a a path to more playing time for her and then i'd be remiss if i didn't say i don't know this girl's name if you happen to know it and you can pronunciate it right please let us know (laughs) because i want to get this right but i have to point her out for a reason so i have her down as jackie gemelos jackie if you're listening i'm sure you're not yet um but if you are (laughs) let me know the spelling of your name i'm sorry not the spelling but the enunciation the reason why i want to point her out is because I just happen to think it's awesome. She's got the number 88. How <laughs> confident must you be of a, as a player if you're willing to wear the number 88? <laughs> Who does that besides Dennis Rodman? Yeah, nobody that I know. Well, moving on from the Connecticut Sun, we're going to the Dallas Wings. They have a six and a half, correct? They're projected to win six, six and, and, a and a half games, which we want to make sure you guys understand. Besides the Atlanta Dream, there's no team, right? Six and a half is the lowest win total hung on any team. So clearly expectations are quite low on the wings. For me, I see the wings. Take, I'll take the over on them because first off, they're a young team. I feel like their style of play all match each other. Um, obviously, they dropped off Skylar Diggins-Smith, which is a big trade. And then they also um, got rid of Glory Johnson. But they added on a couple rookies such as Satao Sabali, Bella Aleri, and Taya Taish. I don't know if it's Tayasha or Taisha, but I'll just say Taisha Harris. Um, obviously, we have Arike from last year, who she was great from Notre Dame. 
UConn will remember her from that shot. And uh, from all the shots that she's taken, there's going to have to be uh, bigs to get the rebound. So they added a down the door from the sky who was having a great season. I'm just not sure that she's going to be able to continue that with the wings. What do you think? I mean, I have to disagree with you. I, I, I think Nador is going to do great, right? I mean, she's used to playing with great guards. Now, I'm not saying the wings have great guards, but I would argue that that's the strength of their team. There's going to be plenty of playing time for her. And I also think that she's really athletic. She runs the floor well. And I think that's exactly how the young wings are going to play. Literally, young wings. Um, this team is incredibly young, as you already mentioned, Tati. And more than anything, we have to consider the situation, right? So we're in a pandemic. It's not like they're going to be hosting home games. It's not like this young team has to play true road games. They're going to be trapped in their own bubble in the same state as the NBA is, right? They're off, yeah. I believe, at IMG Academy. And, and what a great spot, right? But, well, not like the NBA bubble, but that's a story for a different day. The point is, if we're in a pandemic and we're basically staying in, as they're calling it themselves, these are the players, not me. Don't get mad at me. Get mad <laughs> at Tati and Liv. But no, for real, is the players have alluded to the fact that they're staying like in dormitory type environment. Well, I, I don't know for certain but the Wings are an incredibly young team with multiple rookies on this team. And Arike, right, she's like a, essentially their leader, right? We know she's a second-year player. Second year. So they're incredibly young. So I can argue that of every, all 12 teams that are in the bubble, the Wings should be most accustomed to being in this type of environment. So I think that helps them in addition to not playing true road games. So for those reasons alone, and it has nothing to do with Arike's 37 shots per game that she is going to shoot this year, someone's going to shoot, and it's absolutely going to be her, then I actually like this team. So I like, I like the Wings to go over six and a half wins. And also, from, to win the entire WNBA championship, they're anywhere from 80 to 100 to 1. The 100 to 1 that's been hung on them is the lowest odds of anyone playing. I certainly wouldn't bet on that. I think you have a higher chance of winning the lotto. <laughs> yeah, but no thanks. I will say, six and a half wins, I think, is feasible given the pandemic platform and situation that we're all under. So um, that's my take on the wings. Is there, from a sleeper standpoint, at least for me, before I pass back to Tati, you know, that's tough for me. Um, I really don't have one. If I was forced to, I would probably take Marina Mabry. I know she was a former LA Sparks girl. And I just think that there'll be more opportunities for her on the Young Wings team as opposed to on the veteran-laden LA Sparks. Tots? Yeah, so to finish up with the Wings, we ne I didn't mention Satara Sabali. Um, obviously, uh, the second pick in the draft um, she's a great player, adds a bunch of size to that team. You know, I think she'll do a great job getting the rebound, to getting the rebounds, and I just think she'll be a good fit for that team. If I had to choose a sleeper real fast, it would probably be Isabel Harrison, usually around like the 5'4", five, 5'8", five, area. Um, when she gets in, she gets boards, putbacks. Um, she's even, she's a little bit of a smaller forward, so she can also pass the ball. I, I made a mistake, and most pops do. Um, <laughs> I actually think Sabali wins the Rookie of the Year. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Arike got it last year. The Wings pr franchise, they know. Nafisa. You know what? I make that mistake all the time. <laughs> I forget Miss Collier out in Minnesota. I'm so sorry. Um, but High and contender, some people though. think that Arike should have won it last year. She was certainly in contention. I think Sabali is going to go ahead and get it done this year. Uh, obviously, I like Nador in general, but someone else is going to get some of those 37 shots that Arike shoots. Yeah. Uh, Sabali, I think, is going to bring some uh, positive things to the team. So overall, I'm actually somewhat high on the wings. And again, my fault, Nafisa. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to the Indiana Fever, a very interesting name during this time. Pops, you go ahead and start on this one. So the Fever, they're projected to win eight and a half games. That's their over-under. And then to win it all, they're at 50 to 1. So I don't really yeah. glean any type of information one way or the other from this. Um, of all the teams that we previewed so far and likely for the entire uh, first episode, 
um, I, I, I'm, I really don't have a lot of strong opinions uh, from the overall standpoint of the team, and then even from the personnel standpoint. Outside of Miss McCowan, I, I don't really know, right? So I mean, you got the the MVP from last year's WNBA uh, All Star Game and Erica Wheeler. Again, I don't know. Uh, Candace Dupree, man, just uh, so talented, but. I don't even think just based on her body language, I don't even think she even knows. So how am I supposed to know? So I've given you the odds, and I really honestly, I hate to pass the buck here, but I really don't have any strong opinions. Um, Their first round pick, right, Lauren Cox, I don't know. So Tati, I hope you know, because I certainly (laughs) don't. Well, obviously, the Fever, they're a big team in Candice Dupree, um, Lauren Cox, Tierra McCowan, and another one is Natalie Achangwa. She, I've liked her for, uh, since she was drafted by them. You know, she's a good overall player. She's like my, she's like my high sleeper for this team. Um, but I don't, I don't really like their guards. Erica Wheeler, I feel like she's overrated. She didn't do, she didn't do much before the All-Star game. Yeah, she went off for 26 points in that game, went up to about like 10-1 in DraftKings, but then just shocked everybody and didn't do anything after that. So I don't like their guards. You, you also have Victoria Vivians coming back from an injury. She was playing well before that, but then got injured. We don't know how she's going to come back. I just don't know how the Fever are going to play. No, we They're don't. an interesting team. You know, I, I got to I, I remember now because between Tiffany and Kelsey, right? Both guards, both the same last name. I felt like last year that we usually took one of the two Mitchells in DraftKings and it was <laughs> usually the wrong one. And then when we yeah. we'd, we'd we'd flop and go the other way the next game, again it was the wrong one. So we might be slightly partial to for our own personal reasons. Um, <laughs> sorry, you guys. We just uh, this is kind of like our waffling moment. This is like what I call our Mrs. Butterworth segment. So we're passing on the fever. Sorry, yeah. it is what it is. No thanks. <laughs> so moving on to the Las Vegas Aces. Personally, they've been one of my favorite teams to watch. Partly because we go to Vegas to play in tournaments so much, but. I liked the Aces. Um, Liz Cambage, uh, their their star player last season. Allegedly. Yeah. Um, won't play this season because of a uh, like health issue, and then Kelsey Plum injured. Those are two of their like best starters, in my opinion. So, without Liz and Kelsey, what you have left is Kayla McBride which she's a great player. I've seen her working in official sports academy. I think she'll be a good player for this season. And then Asia Wilson, she's been a good player. I think she'll have to do even better, though, with Cambage being out. And then you add in Angel McCautry. I don't really know how she's going to play from her, what was it, a knee injury? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I think she was, I personally think she was injured just in general from playing for the dream for so long. (laughs) Um, Angel McCautry, and then another player you have, uh, Dierka Hanby, sixth man of the year. I don't really like her. I don't think she's going to do well this year just with the team, like, change up and everything. So I don't like her. Um, you also add in Danielle Robinson, a vet, you know, just good experience to the team. Um, I think the Aces, they're going to do okay, but... I don't see him winning this year. What do you think, Pops? Well, I mean, honestly, I'm going to have to disagree with you again. I'm not saying I like them, but I actually think they're going to be slightly overrated personally. But you said you don't see them winning this year. Unfortunately, um, most most places have the Aces as the odds-on favorite to win the ship this year. They're anywhere from 3-4-1. to four to one. The 3-1 to one that's been hung on them uh, is actually the best – or uh, the the odds on favorite to win the whole title next year uh from a a win total perspective they're projected to win 13 and a half games that's one of the very highest i think it's the third highest that we're going to to mention out of all 12 teams so a lot of people are high on them now keep in mind liz obviously out you already touched on that as well as kelsey plum here's a hot take for you i actually think and i know i'm in the minority that's why it's (laughs) called a hot take tati 
I think the Aces are going to miss Kelsey Plum more this year than Liz Cambage this year. So just remember that. I also feel like this team, man, I I really hope they get off to a great start. And then, you know, the price kind of inflates on them. And then they're favored by a ton of points. So instead of being favored by 9 or 10 points, they're favored by like 14 or 15 points. Because I actually question how strong their bench is. Um, I I think they have some negatives. Um, I don't call them negatives. But I think they have some minus minutes type of plus minus. I think they have some minus players at like seven eight and nine so i don't think their bench is very deep um so again i i'm not likely to look to this team very often from a fantasy perspective i actually do like danielle robinson i do believe you brought her up just a little bit ago i just feel like the you know partly due to kelsey plum's injury you know jackie young is still very young i do think she's gonna be better than she was last year but i just see a path for more minutes this year for danielle robinson as opposed to last year when she was the with the Minnesota Odyssey Sims Lynx. Uh, I think the <laughs> Minnesota was just absolutely enamored with Odyssey Sims. Yeah. Just her, you know, that, that she was a nice shiny toy and, you know, they were happy to have her. Uh, yeah, she certainly she got all the way up to like 10-4 on draft. Man, points. if you're going to interrupt me, you better be able to serve those right numbers. And I know you were. And you know, it's ironically <laughs> enough, for full disclosure, I actually was on Odyssey Sims multiple times in the captain spot last uh-huh. year. So, you know, I, I should be careful with that. But again, I, I do love like Danielle this year I I think that she's I don't know how strong her role is going to be right out of the gate but I can see by mid-season you know that she's she's going to be a starter and getting about 28 to 30 minutes a game so tough team to predict Uh, I think there's already too many people on their bandwagon that makes sense um moving on to the Los Angeles Sparks always a high contender for the ship and everything um so you Okay, so they added Christy Tolliver, which I thought was a great add, but then, of course, she had to drop out. So, um, another player that dropped down was Chine Agbumake, and I think I'm saying that right. (laughs) But with her being sisters with uh, Neka Agbumake, I think that that won't help them just because that's more chemistry between the two of them. Um, and then obviously Alana Beard, the defense, like six time defensive uh, player of the year or something like that. Uh, she retired, so that'll be a big change for them as well. But they have Candace Parker, great player, Chelsea Gray, her passes are amazing. And then um, Neka Gwumake, and they added on the vet, Simone Augustus. I also like Raquana Williams, I always have. Um, she, when she scores, she scores a lot, and she's just one of those players that can do a, a bunch or nothing at all. Raquana reminds me of a, a much older version of your younger sister, Liv Legend. You know, <laughs> yeah. Liv, when she gets going, man, she's she an ultimate going. heat check, and she's got some handles, shiftiness. So, uh, Raquana, I hope you heard that. Um, <laughs> I agree with you. I just feel like. With the Sparks, well, let me go ahead and get to the numbers real quick. So they're projected to win 13 and a half games, um, too high, first off. And then they're like second or third favorite, right? So they're four, about four, four and a half to one to win it all. I don't really like that. Uh, I feel like this team has like 34 guards and a couple <laughs> of forwards. And, you know, I mean, Chelsea Gray, I, I mean, for the viewership listening, and, um, you know, Tati and Liv have actually been able to work with Chelsea Gray a few times. And Another what reason a, why I love her. <laughs> what a great opportunity for them. And Chelsea, man, Miss Gray, she's been great. And no surprise, you know, she's a great Cal Storm player. Um, so, no, again, Storm family runs deep. So, Chelsea, we, we we're definitely rooting for you in, in, the, in, in every way possible. But, you know, to bring over Christy Tolliver, right, her not playing. You already mentioned Cheney. You know, uh, Cheney. Cheney. I don't know how to pronounce Right? It. Then Kalani Brown. Alana Beard, who I think she's 57 at this point. So, <laughs> you know, I just don't know where their size really is. So with that being said, I actually think a sleeper pick is uh, is Marie Gulich. Um, oh, yeah. I felt like she was injured a lot last year, um, but they also had a lot more forwards and uh, post players. So I think that there's opportunity for her this year. I'm really interested to see how she plays. And I could argue Sydney Weiss is, Weiss is another player that I think is might be able 
to get garner um, a few opportunities but again she's in that log jam known as guard so again i'm passing on the sparks i actually like the under and then uh, i would be we would completely be doing you guys a disservice if we also didn't mention the unsettledness with the way that last season ended right so they fired uh you know their gm there was some issues with Derek fisher oh, former candace laker parker. point four candace parker and yes you know Derek Fisher's mentioned that, you know, he's learned a lot. Well, I mean, we're all trying to learn, right? Hopefully we all stop learning once we're gone. And as a, as a pops, right, to, to, with kids, you know, we, we always try to be learning, right? We learn until the day we die. So what else is Fisher supposed to play, say? So, of course, a lot of people are going to sweep this under the rug and just think let bygones be bygones. But, you know, as much as I like Fish for his time point four and everything he did as a champion with the lakers i gotta be honest with you his coaching past and the stuff off the court where there's smoke there's fire so i'm passing a strong pass on the sparks speaking of fire i just said sparks so i should have known better <laughs> yeah right uh minnesota lynx they have always been like a top team always finish like pretty high uh, but they always come out in, like, second round of playoffs. Um, so Maya Moore, she's, like, an interesting player. I don't remember exactly what it was, but she hasn't pay played for, like, the last two or three seasons. She hasn't, but you know what? Uh, Tata, I'm not sure if you know why, but, you know, in, in the news, she was able to help uh, overturn a conviction with a prisoner. So all due respect to Maya Moore unbelievable what you've done uh, if that's the definition of selfless and we'll have to talk more about that off the podcast yeah uh, but miss Moore, like wow what amazing things that you've done and uh we hope that we can see you back on the court as soon as possible you're amazingly talented on and even more so off the court so with that said, we'll transition back into the links in general. Um, I don't know for our, for everyone listening. I'll take a go ahead and challenge you. Find me another mascot that ends with the letter X. Go ahead. I'll keep <laughs> waiting. Um, for for the links in general, uh, they're projected to win nine and a half games this year. So again, out of a member, please keep in mind it's only a twenty two game season. It's certainly shortened due to the pandemic. And then they're 35 to 1 to win the championship this year. And that's like middle bottom. So it's everything's uh, supposed to be, a, well, all signs are pointing towards a down year. Yes, they return. And here's my chance for redemption. They return <laughs> the rookie of the year in the Fisa Collier. Amazingly talented. Sylvia Fowles, we know she's going to be up there for defensive player of the year. I think, though, at this point, she's a known commodity. We. We, everyone knows how to defend her at this point. Still super talented, super good. But age, I think she's on the wrong side of, of, of that number. I'm also not a fan of the rookies that they added. Um, I just, I'm not really sold on them. I'm excited to see what Lexi Brown does this year. I see her all over Instagram probably 14 <laughs> times a day. So I'm sure she's going to be showing out as much as she can. I'm actually uh, I'm I'm excited to see Dantas play. I believe Me she used too. to play for the Fever, um, and I want to so. see what she does. Um, I could easily see a situation, you know, they they are crowded in the front court uh, with the, the Rookie of the Year and Sylvia Fowles, but I think there's an opportunity for Dantas to earn some backup minutes just due to foul trouble and you know just age to Sylvia Fowles in general. So I'm excited to see her. Um, and outside of that, Rachel Banham, Banham, I think Banham. she's Banham. She's got an opportunity um, as a guard to do some big things. And I feel like there was a couple times last year where she went like 10, 11 X uh, from a DFS standpoint. So yeah. I could see um, her getting some opportunities as well. So I agree with the Dante. She was playing really well. Yeah, last year she was playing really well. Um, she started to get more minutes, and her and Fowles ended up equaling towards the end of the year. So she'll be an interesting one. I disagree with Pops when it comes to the rookies, just because bringing in Crystal Dangerfield, she was um, uh, teammates with Nafisa Collier at UConn. So both of them have a little bit of chemistry and friendship as well so i think that could help the minnesota Lynx when it comes to that uh i haven't i haven't watched what is it micaiah herbert harrigan that's an interesting name 
Um, I haven't watched her at all, so I don't know how she's going to do. But I think that I'll take the over on, what was it, the eight and a half? No. Nope. Nine and a half? Nine, Nine and, and a half. half. I'll take the over just because the Lynx, they have some vets. So I'll so, take the over on that. Let me ask you this. Since we mentioned both these names already, right? So we mentioned Danielle Robinson. We mentioned Odyssey Sims. What? What's? Who's bringing the ball down? Like, what's the situation? Do we know where Odyssey Sims is at now? No, I don't. Good know question, right? Way. So we might have had an oversight. Mistakes happen. Yeah. Again, this is a situation where Tati can blame it on her pops, and I wouldn't be surprised. It happens <laughs> all the time. So if again, if we oversighted um, Odyssey Sims, that's on us. I happen to think she's still with the Lynx, but uh, I don't I, remember exactly what happened. So with that. so so our apologies there. If she's there again. Uh, you already me heard me say that I'm I'm not the strongest of fans of hers. I th I think she was overrated. I think if she was ever going to show out for the Lynx, it was going to be in year one. And I just don't know how you go from L.A. to Minnesota. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, right enemies. You know, I don't know. Carl Anthony Towns, I have to ask him. You know, D'Angelo Russell has been all over the place. And I'll keep this PG just because my daughter's on the call. But <laughs> D-Loading, I see you on Instagram, too. So I see you stunting on the gram. So anyways... Trying to be young, you guys. Sorry. <laughs> so let's start going on to the New York Liberty. Um, oh, man. Another hot take here. I think they're overrated. Now you're going to ask me, how could you possibly be overrated when you have 17 new players? <laughs> well, I'll tell you how. So they're projected to win 10 games. And additionally, they're anywhere from 18 to 1 to 30 to 1 to win the title this year. There's no greater disparity between one specific team as it relates to the, their uh, title odds. So that tells me that odds makers don't really necessarily know where to list this team. And then additionally, 10 wins for the Liberty? I think that is inc that's crazy talk. I don't see how that happens. Um, that, I mean, essentially, they're saying for you to win this bet, if you were to take the over, you're saying that they get to 11 wins. So that's a 500 record. Now... Again, how are they going to be that many wins better than last year? I, I think odds makers forgot they were playing a shortened season. I see no way this team gets to 11 wins. I, I just don't. And that's with all due respect to Sabrina. And what a quality individual to have as a role model for all of, uh, all of our youth. You know, I mean, she's just a winner. But she's going to have to really win a heck of a lot for them to win this bet if you were to take the over. So I like the under quite a bit. Um, and then I know Tati's going to mention uh, Leona Odom, another <laughs> Kyle Storm player. I'll let her touch on that. Uh, but overall, just because of how overrated and inflated the odds are for the Liberty, and it's obviously because of Sabrina, I absolutely have to take the under here. Tati? Yeah, it's going to be interesting for the Liberty. I think it's going to take them... Um... I think it's going to be, like, more than halfway through the season before they really start, like, getting to, like, know each other's games completely in, like, actual games. And they basically got rid of their whole team. So it's a brand new team, seven rookies. I just don't know how that's going to play out. And um, Kia Nurse, she's a great player. You have to share the ball between Kia Nurse and, uh, what is it, Sabrina. That'll be interesting. And then Amanda Zowie B, she's a great forward as well. But with her getting in foul trouble, that'll give you Liana Odom, which I think is like their next big. So it's going to be quite an interesting year for the Liberty. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I would love for Odom to, to be that close in the rotation. I think Kaya Stokes is going to be up before her. Um, yeah. Um, I happen to like... Uh, forwards more than guards since this is such a young team right so again this is just my own personal opinion I think it's easier for f bigs to transition to the next level than it is guards at least in the WNBA I think there's just so much to learn in running a team and the terminology and the set pieces in the WNBA it's different than the NBA in my opinion now even though I'm a hard pass on this team and I think they're going to underperform 
the inflated expectations, there's a couple of players that I'm really high on from a DFS standpoint. One has already been mentioned by Tati, Zowie B. I don't think there's another name in the WNBA that I love to start yelling at the top <laughs> of my lungs in my house when she's going off in DraftKings than Zowie B. I just love to just say it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna harm all your ears for all you that are listening right now, but uh, I, I think with the fast pace that the Liberty are likely to run with, uh, I just think that she gobbles up boards like no other. Uh, and then the other gobble, player gobble. is, uh, yeah, I know you'd think it's th- Thanksgiving over here. <laughs> the other player that I really like that um, I'm just a sucker for to begin with, and I know it's a crowded backcourt, but um, she hasn't been mentioned yet. And I already know if I looked at Tati right now, if I could see her, she'd be laughing. It's Asia Durr. I just think she's going to do big things. I'm sold on her. Um, I think she's the forgotten piece when most people think of Sabrina and then, of course, Kia Nurse. I think Asia Durr, she's going to find a spot. And once she gets her real opportunity this year and she's remains and she's healthy, I believe. And you know what's crazy, though? I just looked right now, and I was just told she's not going to play this year. So, of course, right? <laughs> Another mistake for me. Wow, I, I feel like I should go crawl under a rock. Whenever Asia does come back, I know it's always going to be the next time. Right? Asia Durr is going to be something special still in this yeah, league. Yeah, she will. So, yeah, scratch that on Asia. My apologies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, moving on to the Phoenix Mercury. That, it's going to... This is going to be an exciting show to watch between Diana Taurasi, Skylar Diggins-Smith, and then Brittany Griner. And adding in there, Jessica Breland. Oh, wait, just kidding. She's not going to play. You uh, know, blame it on COVID. <laughs> right? If COVID hasn't jacked up everyone's 2020, why not just add up? It's going to jack up our podcast. So, you know, it is a little confusing doing yeah, additions, doing subtractions, and then... At one minute they're playing, then they're not playing. So, again, it looks like we've messed that up a couple of times. So, <laughs> it is what it is. At least you are, uh, you guys are all hearing us. We did this. This is our first take. Okay? And so, you know, we could go back, retry it, and try to be perfect. But that's just not how life works, especially not in 2020. So, nope. we're moving forward. Um, real quick, on the Mercury, um, I have them projected to win 10 and a half games. And then they're anywhere from 9 to 10 to 1 to win it all. Um, I, we're not going to be homers here. We're from the West Coast. We have some connections. Obviously, Diana Taurasi. We're going to mention the other Storm, storm players. we got to mention the GOAT. <laughs> she's goat. the best of all time. Um, if anyone can pull it off, it's it's likely to be her. But I know she's getting up in age. I'm excited to see what Skylar Diggins-Smith brings to this team. If anyone says they know for sure what she's going to do, you're wrong. We saw that she's working with Lethal Shooter um, on Instagram. And uh, both Tati and Liv were able to do uh, some online work and was a part of a a couple of things that they did. So thank you for that. Thank you for giving back to the youth. We're always watching. Um, But again, overall, I don't know if Sophie Cunningham can can pick it up anymore. Uh, I actually think this team overall is a little shy on, on depth. Right, I'm excited to see what Brianna Turner does. I think she's gonna have to step it up. Brittany Griner, of course, she's an MVP candidate. They have a couple of them, uh, but again, I actually uh, I don't like this team. I'd have to take the under force to. Uh, but the player that I actually like is Shatori Walker Kimbro. Uh, I think that uh, the the Mercury certainly right. No one can argue that they they have their guards are uh experienced and then there are some question marks as it relates to health i think anyone can be honest and would say that uh so i think there's a great option for her she's used to having to battle for minutes at washington with with the crowded backboard there with natasha cloud and um christy tolliver so this is nothing new to her so i like her as my sleeper pick for this team in my opinion this team is the most energetic team From what it seems like, you know, Sophie Cunningham brings a lot of energy to the table as well as um, Diana Taurasi. It is um, more of a guard team. So when it comes to the forwards, especially with Jessica Breland not Breland not being a part of the team, Brianna Turner going into her second year is gonna, yeah, second or third year, um, she's gonna have to step up. My sleeper pick for this team is um, an interesting one. I actually like Bria Hartley. She played well for the Liberty, and I was on her a couple times. 
um, you know, she's, she always, she's, like, in the middle, she'll, like, go for, like, when you say middle, you're talking about, like, in the four, the high 4,000s, low 5,000s, is that what you're saying, from a salary standpoint in DraftKings? Yeah, like, around five, it's five, two, five, two, okay. yeah, four, eight, five, two, um, she's an interesting player, she, she also has high energy, I just feel like she can be a player to step up for the Phoenix Mercury. I got to ask you because I actually, before I disagree, I just want to ask. So you said that this is the maybe the most high energetic, energetic team. Okay, yeah. and then you mentioned Sophie, I totally agree with. Diana Taurasi, who obviously missed most of last season. Correct me if I'm wrong, but most of that energy was coming from the bench, right? So to me, there's a difference between energy from the bench and then energy from the starters. And then... In addition, isn't Brittany Griner the least expressive and the most low energetic player that's ever lived? Am I wrong there? Or I mean, tell me. I mean, unless she gets and ones, which she gets a lot of fouls, but that's like the only time she's energetic, and I feel like she gets hacked a lot. So with her being hacked a lot, she can bring energy. Okay. But I mean, I mean besides that, there's not too much. I think the her. only time that Brittany shows any type of anything is when she's playing the Dallas Wings <laughs> and she gets in fights, but I think that's another story for another podcast. <laughs> I agree. So moving on to the Seattle Storm. What do you think, Pops? Seattle well, Storm. I certainly like the name, right? Um Right? Um well I don't really like them. I'm a, someone that's kind of a contrarian to begin with. So they're the uh, their win total for the season is at 15. That's the highest of anyone. So in order to win that, if you were to bet on the over, you'd have to win 16 of the 22 games. So they'd have to go 16 and 6. No, thank you. Um, they're <laughs> anywhere from uh, th- you know about low threes to four and a half to one to win it all. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting, right? Because they obviously have their star back, right? And they kind of have a Both couple stars, them. right? But Brianna's back. She's going to be on a mission, right? Sue Bird, she's been on a mission her whole life. And what a player. A Hall of Famer. Can't say enough good things about her. Jordan Canada, I'm a huge fan of her. Pac-12. Jewel Lloyd, she can get it going. She's a bucket. Mm-hmm. Sammy Whitcomb, wow, that girl played really well last year in her opportunity. She made the most of it. Alicia Clark, maybe the most consistent, most underappreciated player in the game. And you know what's crazy? I think I mentioned five players. I haven't even brought up Natasha Howard. Um, Hopefully her off-the-court stuff is completely a thing of the past. Uh, Man, overall, this team is strong. Mercedes Russell, Crystal Langhorn. I mean, I can go on and on. I didn't say Epiphany Prince. Um, But again, I don't want to confuse you guys. I said that they're you know they're the odds on favorite you know 15 wins that's the most of anyone but i just mentioned and listed all their players i feel bad for you tati i just went in and mentioned (laughs) them all but everything's got to go right for them they have to go 16 and 6 i'm gonna pass on that this honestly besides i think it's the fever i think this is the team that i just am probably just gonna stay completely away from um and from a sleeper standpoint sorry i'm a hogging all the time I'll sell Sammy Whitcomb, obviously, with Sue Bird back. Um, and then I just think the guard position is just completely crowded. People are going to be expecting Whitcomb to do kind of like what she did last year, but it's a completely different season. Her usage rate, it's going to be like a fourth of what it was last year. I don't have a play on player. This team is too stacked and too deep. I only have a sell high player, and that's Sammy Whitcomb. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't do any bets on this team. I just Well, you can't because well, <laughs> it, you're too young. Okay, if I was old enough, I wouldn't do any bets on this team just because I feel like 16 and 6, that's a lot. Um, I feel like Seattle Storm are going to win the championship, but I just don't know 16 and 6. That's pretty high. But so, I do feel like they'll have the highest record. Um, so are you saying that you, if not that you could wager? And no, again, I can't. We want you to go to college. <laughs> we want you to do all those fancy things. Same with Liv. We don't want Liv to bet either. Okay. But are you saying that you do think they win it all, but you wouldn't touch the over under 15 wins for the season? But you do like them to win it all. So 
anywhere from plus 325 to plus 450 you like that bet yeah i do okay i i think i just like brianna stewart and sue bird together they're just they're strong okay fair enough well if tati says it it's probably gonna happen (laughs) so she's saying the storm are gonna win so for all you listeners go 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 place that wager since she can't and then I know, you know, right? Uh, and then give me some of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, when she's off to some fancy locale playing in some big-time event, some fancy combine, don't forget about her and send her a buck here and there. Yeah, right? So now we're going to move forward. We're going to go to the, um, I believe this is our last preview, yep. team preview. Uh, thanks for, for those that are still listening uh, from the first minute to whatever minute we're in now. We want to thank you. You know, I tend to be long-winded. Tati's got a lot of information. It's really hard to give you kind of like an evergreen podcast, um, but we think it's important that you get our general thoughts for the entire season of each team. We want to be as thorough as possible, and we understand that you know time is of the essence. We all are given the same 86,400 seconds each day, and we want you guys, we want you to feel like you're getting the most for every second that you listen to us. So again, thank you guys for sticking by us and we're only gonna get better from here. Uh, With regards to the Mystics, Tati, what is your take on the team before I give their betting numbers? I do not like the Mystics this year. They added Tina Charles, but she's not playing. Obviously their MVP, their star, Elena Deladon, not playing. Um, two other players, Natasha Cloud and Latoya Sanders. Is that I not mean, just the, is that four-fifths of the starting lineup? Yes, it is. I mean, all that you have left from that is Emma Meesman, playoff Meesman. Um, playoff Meesman, the only way this team lives up to their expected numbers is if it's playoff Meesman every single second of every single game. If that happens, great. If it doesn't, great. Sorry, you guys, if you're able to hear that vibrating. That was one of Tati's friends or colleagues or teammates reaching out to her. Um, (laughs) You know, I want to make sure you guys understand this is our last team, so I want to tell you just a brief, quick story. Last year, um, Tatiana took down, Tati and I took down uh, an entire contest where she was... um, it was the Mystics versus the, the Aces. Aces, and Tati crowned Emma Meesman before any of you really knew who Emma Meesman really truly was. She went off in a game. I think she made darn near every single shot, um, and she went nuts. And Tati took down the whole contest. And yes, I want you all to know, all you DFSers, that was with one lineup. Yeah, one lineup. Right, so... We so were pretty proud of that. More than a little, right? So... Um, <laughs> So, from the Mystics, before I'll go ahead and give it back to Tati, uh, what's your take on the team in general? I know you just mentioned it, but how about any players, anything stand out to you? Yeah, in my opinion, Ariel Powers, she had some good minutes last year, but she's going to have to have a lot of really good minutes this year. What about Leilani Mitchell? That's what I was just going to get to. She is, she's, she's really good. Um... Was she good just in Phoenix, or do you think she does her game I, translate over to Washington? Yeah, that's. I just don't know about her. She, she'd go for twenty-two one night, and then for like ten the next night. Um, I just don't know how she's gonna play over here, honestly. And then another player you have is Ariel Atkins. Uh, she's usually around like the high six eight ish, like high sixes is what I meant to say like six, eight, and then low sevens. So she's another interesting player. I just don't really like this, the Mystics in general this year. Which is interesting what is their numbers? because, well, speak of the devil, Tati. They're projected <laughs> to win 14 and a half games, so they're the second highest win total. Yeah, no thank you. Combined with, they're about three and a half to one to win it all. Uh, obviously, that is contingent on the final word from Deladon. Uh, which right. again, it's a, it's it's a it's leaning towards a very strong no that she's going to play this year. So if she doesn't, then obviously those odds will change, and they should. Even if she did, I still think these odds are 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 way too low. Um, from a sleeper standpoint, honestly, number ten Shea Petty, I I think that she could do pretty good. Um, she's a deep sleeper in my opinion. I could see where she shows up a little bit. Outside of that. 
you know, I don't really have too many thoughts. I, I would I would take the under. Uh, 14 and a half is just too many games. I, I think, I'll be honest, that those those odds are probably not there. Um, I, I would project it to drop to about 12 and a half, if not 11 and a half, if Deladon was out. So that would be a tough one to take um, to get, probably. I'd probably be off the board, to be honest with you. So that's my take on the Mystics. Tati, um any other thoughts um, before I before I mention one more thing? Um, you know, I just appreciate all you guys tuning into this. First of all, um, I love doing this. I can't wait to go on for f- um, further podcasts in the future. That's my last thing. Again, thank you guys all for listening. Um, we want you to know that again, we're only going to get better from here, and you know, we're darn near an hour in. We will, moving forward, we will certainly preview all weekend games. So you could certainly expect two podcasts um, during the weekend on both Saturday and Sunday. And then, you know, we'll try to go once or twice during the week. Whether it's Monday, Wednesday, whether it's Tuesday, Thursday, we'll certainly give that information out to you as we make a final decision. But you can be rest assured you'll get daily uh, on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, you'll get those podcasts. Again, you'll find those at... Tati Harness, T A T I H A R N E S S, on Instagram, as well as her, her sister Liv, who will be part of more of the daily stuff at Liv, L I V underscore Harness, H A R N E S S. Obviously, if you're listening to this, you've got you found us through their Instagram. Please share with your friends if you care about these young ladies, and most of you have certainly been highly entertained from the girls, you understand how committed they are to their craft. Now you have an opportunity to see from Tati just another different side of her. She is she's so got so many amazing things about her, and she's gonna do great things in her career. Uh, her basketball is very important to her sports in general. She loves her journalism, as I already mentioned. Um, and so please give it a follow. Tell your friends. Hope you have fun with it. Comment as much as possible. Let us know your takes. We take it very seriously. And again. I'm going to tell you guys once again, thank you so much. And I'm going to pass it back to Tati for the conclusion. Yeah, well, speaking on me, one last thing is that I love my numbers and I love the WNBA. Um, So I just love talking about it. And I can't wait to have further uh, podcasts, like I said before. And, yeah, I just want to thank you guys all for listening to to our first podcast. And we'll hope we hope to see you on the next one. Thank you.